Hello, welcome along. Here I'm going to be talking about some changes that affect how you configure and set up a migration with project when it relates to a Microsoft 365 tenant, either as your source or destination, or obviously both. The change comes from the requirement for application impersonation. Microsoft are closing down the ability to assign this management role inside a tenant at the end of May 2024. So if you don't have one set up in there by then, you won't be able to create a new one after that date. If you do have one already set up in the tenant, they tell us that it will work through to the end of December 2025. So what I'm going to show you is the replacement method for performing this task. Now, to get to this setup item, I'm going to go through and create a new migration with project with two live tenants. And I'm going to configure the application registration components, which you'd normally need. Um, that's not a change. We, we would always have to do that. But it's right at the end of that. We can use those and we're going to assign um, some new requirements to it, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to go through the help desk article that they've put out, uh, which take us through that process as well. So you've got a reference point for this video as well. So you can go back to that and look at it. Um, but I'll take you through it all end to end so we can create, as I say, the new project with all of this set up without the need for that application impersonation anymore. So let's get into it and let's create this new project then. So just as normal, we go to create project and that will be a mailbox project and we'll give it a name and look for a customer, which I'll put in our back testing and we'll choose our migration frog tenant and hit next. And we're going to create uh, a couple of new endpoints here. So I'll say new, and that will be the M365. I call that MigFrog and Microsoft 365 and put in the credentials there like so. And so we hit add and it'll take us into the screen that's waiting for the, the client ID and the tenant ID for the application registration that we're about to do. So I will jump in now into the Azure side and let's create those. Now I want to show you where this is inside the help center because um, it's important. You will need to cut and paste a couple of things out of there. So it's good to know where this is. And it is under the normal Exchange Online Office 365 mailbox migrations, as you can see here. This is a common one I'm sure you've, you've seen and been to before. But if you go down a little bit, you'll find here authentication methods for 365. It talks about the mod north requirements, which is basically exactly what we're doing. So we go into that. And if we go down a little bit, you can see it's talking about how we obtain those client ID and tenant ID settings. And if you go all the way down to here, you can see it starts to set up that app registration, which is what we're going to do. Now, the key part we want here is I need this little guy here. Just copy that out. That's something we're going to use in the setup. So I can put that away there and we we'll go ahead and go into the app registrations here and we will say new registration. I'll call this one just migration with, we need to say multi-tenant and under here we've got public native and that is where we paste in that uh, item we just copied out. So we'll do that, hit register and there it is. So there's a couple more things we have to do in here before it's ready. We need to go to authentication and we need to drop down a little bit here and we need to turn on this item, make it yes for the mobile and desktop flows, hit save and also go into the application, so the API permissions, and we need to give it some rights in there too. So we go to add a permission, and we want to be APIs my organization uses, and we type in, type in office, you'll find that it'll come up with this guy here, exchange online, and that's gonna be delegated permissions, and we need to find EWS and hit that, add the permissions, and then we'll grant the admin consent. And there we go. Now from here, go back to the overview and we can grab these items here. So we've got the application, the client ID, uh, this one. We'll copy that to clipboard. And if I drag that down there, that's the one that goes into here. And just come back to that other screen and we'll grab the bottom one, the directory, the tenant ID, and that goes in there as well and hit next step. Now on the destination side, I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing. So rather than go through that on the video, I'm just going to create an application in the, in the target and I'm just going to put those values in. So you can see there I've created all of that, I've got those IDs pumped in there, hit next step and we'll save and go to summary. And that'll take us into the normal migration project once we save it that you would expect. 
So now let's get into these changes that we need to have for the application impersonation. So there is a help desk article and let me show you where that is. You can see here under performer migration, 365 migrations, you can see it's called the replacement for the, the RBAC for Exchange Online. And this does give all the information that we've just been talking about and talks you through how to do it. As you can see all of these, what I'm gonna do, I will refer to this, um, but I'm gonna be showing you on screen uh, what we need to do and put in. So we're gonna start off with the PowerShell. It's all done through PowerShell. So I'll bring up a PowerShell window and I'll connect to the source environment first. And then I'll show you what the uh, the commands we need to run in there are. So I've connected to that migration frog uh, tenant, which is our source environment. And you can see I'm, I'm logged in with that uh, Exchange Online module. So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna create the management scope. Secondly, we create a service principle, and then we assign the management role across that to really bind that all together. So the first command there is the management scope, which we can copy from the uh, the help desk page if you want to. I'm just going to type it in here and show you what it looks like. So we say it'll be new management scope and you can see I've already done these previously which is why it's remembering for me. Um, so we'll do that but I'm actually going to call this one just migration whiz. Now when you put in the recipient restriction filter um, you can have it allocated like I say there display name like which will do everything. You can use other examples like you could say recipient type is equal to user mailbox or you could say custom attribute is equal to a certain value if you want to restrict that migration a bit. So it gives you that flexibility to say what what this management scope is really going to be um, having the rights to be able to do. Um, in this small migration, display name like star is, is perfectly adequate, uh, but you might want to, to restrict that a bit, and that's what that filter is about. So if I put in that guy, you can see now it's uh, it's taken that on board. And of course, display like star is also the same as not equal to null, and you can see that's why that translation's happened. But you can see now we have a recipient scope with that migration with label on it. So our next command is the new service principle, and you can see I've started that one, and I'm gonna give it the application ID. Now this comes from that app registration that we just did. Now if I bring that back up, that's the screen we left it, which is the normal application registration screen. And we're actually after the object ID and the application ID, but this is not the one that you need to come from. And what we actually need to do is we need to go back to the enterprise applications here and go and select it through that. So if we go back to Enterprise Apps, you can see there it is there, and go into that screen, and this is where the information comes from. As you can see, that object ID is actually different. So let's copy out that application ID, and we'll just paste it in there. There we go. And then we're after the object ID, like so, and we will now grab that one from here, and paste that in as well. And we'll give that a display name as well. You know, and we'll call that. There we go, like that. Okay, and that will go ahead and create that service principle for us. You can see that's done successfully there. Now the last one here is the new management role assignment, which we can do as you can see there with the app. Now that app reference could be the object ID, the app ID, or the display name. I've chosen just to put in the app ID, as you can see I've copied it down from here. But on the end of that, we do need to put in what role it is, and that is going to be application, and it will be ews.access as app, like so. So when we run that, you can see that is now assigned that uh, to the service principal. Now we do need to go back to that application registration. So I'll just bring this up here because we do need to give it some more privileges, some more API permissions. So we're gonna do that. We go back to the app registrations here and we'll find that application. And here it is here. Now what we need to do is go into the API permissions and we need to hit add permission. Now this one's a little different. We're gonna do APIs my organization uses. We're gonna do the same one we had before, which is that Office 365, but we're gonna add application permissions instead this time. So when we do that, we'll find that uh, we need to have this top one here, full access as app, and we also need to have on the exchange side, 
Manager's app as well. So we need to add these two in, as I say, they're application permissions. So we do that, add those there, and you'll see them drop down into here, which we would then go and grant the admin consult. Now, the reason I didn't, admin consent, sorry. Now, the reason I didn't do this right at the start was I wanted to show you the, the additional steps needed um, as you go through this, this new process. And lastly, in here, we do need to create a client secret. Acts as like as a password into that, that application there. So we're here, say new client secret, we'll give it a name, just call it migration Wiz. hit add. Now remember that this value is only displayed this one time. If I don't copy it out to the clipboard now, I would have to go and create a new client secret to be able to go and um, have another value. So this it's a one-time view only in there. And I like to, as you can see, drop those into a notepad so I can grab that shortly. I'll leave that up for a second. I'll show you how we're gonna use that. Because if I bring over that, help desk article again, you can see down the bottom here, it's talking about how we do this client secret. So what I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna grab this guy here and I'm gonna put that as a prefix to here, like so, because we're gonna take this whole line now, copy that out and just drop those away because that now goes into the project. So if I come back to the, the main project here, you can see if I edit it and go to advanced options, I need to add extra ones. I'll just add the one in here for now. Do that, paste that in, as you can see there, and we'll go and hit validate. Now we are gonna get an error on the validation. Just as a start there, it says that it doesn't recognize this. This is perfectly okay. Um, it will go in. What we need to now do is click on this guy here. Yes, we're confident, and we do want to save that in there. So now that is in that advanced options. Now, obviously there's another one in there. If I go back in, there's our client secret, but there's another one in there, which is for the import, which we're going to do for the second part of this. So the setup on the target tenant is identical to what we've just done. Obviously we, we add the, the different permissions into the app registration and we grab the, uh, grab the details out of it for the, the client secret, which I've Done already, as you can see, that's the client secret. So we're just catch, catching up the target tenant to where we are in, the, in this video. And we would then have the, the key, which we grab from like so as well. And we'll grab that, put that in. So that's our secondary part, which obviously binds that uh, target tenant in as well. If we go back in here, I can then add another item. And it comes up with the same thing. We're gonna need to validate that. And yes, we are confident. We're happy with our commands and save those. And go back to advanced options, you can see now we've got the, the two client secrets, one for the, the export of the source tenant and the import into the target tenant. So with all the application work that we've done there and the app registration, all the changes there and the service principles, the management role assignment that we've done, we are now actually ready to go ahead and migrate our users again without the need for application impersonation, which again is the, the main reason for having this, this video, this training session. So thank you very much for watching. I just want to refer back just quickly. This is the article which uh, talks about all of those uh, changes that we need to make and takes us through the entire process. So please refer to this if you need to. Uh, but once again, thank you and we will see you on the next video. Have a good day.